The Hotel, written and read by Bill Lenahan. My hand trembled as I fumbled with the access card into the hotel lock. I hoped my hand hadn't been seen shaking when I signed the register. The receptionist asked if Mr Walters would be arriving later in the evening. I told her, yes, of course, but why I told her he would be arriving, I had no idea. Dead men don't walk. Hadn't I attended this funeral only a few days ago? Once again, I felt anger rising me. I wasn't sure whether the anger was at him or me. I had certainly played my part in this sordid affair. The affair had only lasted a matter of months. How a few months can change your life, I thought. And it was entirely my own fault. I was only too willing, more than willing. It wasn't even Christmas party that had started it. He was a director of the company. He told me if I played my cards right, I could go places. So I decided the first place I'd have to go was to bed. Given his flattering reputation, it wouldn't be difficult. I knew he had a family, but that wasn't my problem. I was sure his wife would have known about his affairs. She's probably happy in her big house in the Surrey countryside, I thought. Filling in her time with meaningless things people do when they have nothing else to worry about other than attending the next dinner party. Well, that wasn't for me. I wanted to go places and nothing was going to get in my way, even if it meant sleeping my way there. I remember laughing to myself when I thought, sleeping my way more, more like gymnastics than sleep. But it was fun. I was liberated, free from an overbearing mother and a compliant father who only wanted peace and quiet and a game of golf on a Saturday. I left university with my business degree. It seemed so long ago. Over a year can seem like a lifetime. A month ago, I found out I was pregnant. He was horrified. I couldn't believe his reaction. I thought I'd been so clever, but in reality, I'd been naive. Did I really believe the stories he told me about his wife and their relationship? I still can't answer truthfully whether I did or not. Why didn't you take precautions, he yelled. Haven't you heard of the pill? God almighty, you'll have to get rid of it. If my wife finds out, I'm finished. How in God's name could he be so bloody stupid? Well, I think you should have taken precautions too, particularly when driving at high speed in your Sunday-only Triumph Stag Open Top Sports Car, which you're never tired of telling me about. Stag by name, stag by nature. That's what you used to say. Truth being, you were more of a brag than stag. It crashed on a bend, hit a tree. At first they thought the driver had walked away. It was only when they checked the field did they find his body. The police said if he'd been wearing a seatbelt, maybe, just maybe, he'd have survived. But taking precautions was obviously not his forte. I met his wife at a funeral. I'm ashamed to say, but she seemed such a nice lady. His stories couldn't have been further from the truth. Two children, one handicapped. She mentioned the problem, but I didn't take it in. I felt so ashamed to be standing in front of this devoted mother no one I was carrying the child of a morally devoid deceased husband. So here I was, once again in this less than upmarket hotel, in the same room, with the same furniture, the same smells, and hopefully not the same bed linen. Suddenly I felt sick. Sitting down on the armchair, which was positioned for a view to the window, a view which showed buildings that were less than pleasing to the eye. I realised that this was the first time I'd actually looked at the room. Why would I have looked before, I asked myself, knowing the answer. I was sitting, lost in thought, when I felt the tears, slowly at first, then they became a flood. It suddenly dawned on me, the realisation I was having a baby. Until now, it has just been an inconvenience, something that could be remedied with minimum fuss, or so they told me at the clinic. I'd never sat in the armchair before, as he'd always left his clothes there in a heap, which for some reason used to amuse him. I told my mother I was pregnant, not because I wanted sympathy, I just wanted a shocker. Her reaction wasn't what I was expecting at all. We'll support you, she said. Help you look after the baby. 
There'd be no need to look after anything, I cruelly replied. There'll be nothing to look after once the abortion is over. She looked sad. Asked me, was I sure? I sniggered. You bet I am. Well, you know we are for you. Your dad and I. And the baby, she said, almost in a whisper. Should you change your mind? Looking at the small side table, I saw the book. Gideon's Bible. I can't say I never picked it up on past visits. I don't think it would have been appropriate somehow. I hadn't picked up the Bible since Sunday school, and I'd certainly never read anything from it. I lay back in the armchair. There was a large mirror on the opposite wall. I could see my reflection quite clearly. I couldn't stop looking at myself. It wasn't that my mascara had run, or that my makeup was a mess. I was looking through that. I was looking at me, and I really wasn't sure if I liked what I saw. I opened the Bible. Why, I don't know. I remember from Sunday school that there are 66 references to forgiveness in the New Testament. The teacher told us, and then asked, why forgiveness was so important. Everyone gave a sweet answer. That was until it was my turn. And I said that if they were naughty, they should be punished, not forgiven. Everyone just looked at me, not saying a word. I thought I was being so clever. Now, as I looked at myself in the mirror, I thought, what punishment should I have? With the realisation that I was carrying another human came the realisation that I was about to punish and destroy it. And if I went through with it, would I be forgiven? Could I forgive myself? I must have fallen asleep as I awoke with a start. For a moment, I didn't realise where I was. Then I saw my bag, where I had left it, not even unpacked. Looking at my watch, I thought it was 8.30. I was to be admitted at 9am, with the procedure being carried out at 11. Procedure. Such a simple word. Now it sent a shiver down my spine. I took some wipes from my bag and quickly removed as much of the tear-stained makeup as possible. And in the key at reception, she stared at me. Why, I neither knew nor cared. Did you enjoy your stay, she said. I didn't answer. Did I look like I enjoyed my stay, I thought. I knew I looked a mess. The clinic was a short walk away. I stood there, looking at the door. A few steps and I would be inside. I felt a sense of panic. I could feel myself shaking. I closed my eyes. I just wanted to disappear. A passerby asked if I was all right. Yes, yes, I said. Then I felt something in my hand. I was holding the Bible from the hotel. Suddenly things were all right. I turned and walked down the street. <laughs> <laughs>